this same amount of transactions, uh, the market has produced the same amount of transactions with a double digit price increase this year. So theoretically, you you should have a much better year this year than you had last year just based on the 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 real stats of the market. Okay? Just based on the real stats, you got the same amount of transactions but 10% higher price point. No, the thing is, is like, you guys are putting too much weight on what the market's doing. Um, you know, like it's good to watch the market and pay attention to the market and know what's going on with the market, but that should be completely separated from your actual real estate business, completely. It's two completely different entities that has nothing to do with each other, right? So that's the first thing you gotta wrap your mind around um, because, you know, there's a lot of agents out there that are saying, uh, you know, tough year this year, inventory super low, you know, sellers don't want to sell because they don't want to leave money on the table and, you know, buyers can't find anything and all this and that, right? When meanwhile, you look at the market and you realize as a country, we're just 2% lower a number of transactions than we were last year. So literally the same as last year. Okay, and prices are up double digits. It's like 10 plus percent higher. So the double digit increase in prices far supersedes the 2% decrease in transactions. Okay, now you break that down into local areas, those numbers are, are different, of course. This is an average across the country. But, um, you know, it's not too far off from each local market. Transactions are either the same, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower. Let's just say they're the same. Okay, prices are up double digits, probably across the board. And so for an agent to tell me that this market is tougher or it's been a tough year or whatever, they're actually allowing themselves to use the market as an excuse and a crutch um, to, of why they're not this or that. They haven't, you know, uh, they haven't, you know, sold more this year or maybe they had a down year, whatever the case may be, and then they're blaming this other entity that has nothing to do with your business. So even when you get into these scenarios where the market is lower, a lot less transactions, prices are coming down, those are still scenarios where you're still winning big over here in your business, your personal business. The market can do whatever it wants, but it's gonna produce an unlimited amount of closings every day uh, and enough for every agent, if they're willing to put the work in, if they're willing to go talk to people, let people know they're here to help when they decide to buy or sell. Um, you know, the people that are willing to do that and kind of put whatever the market conditions are in a box and put that box somewhere else far away from their actual business, you know, those agents are gonna succeed at a really high level regardless of what the market does. So I would say first off, it sounds like we're kind of tying what the market's doing really a lot too close to our success. We're tying those two way too close together when you really need to keep them as far separate as possible because they really have nothing to do with each other. Price, when prices adjust, the reason they adjust is because now they have to go down or up depending on what level price point someone will buy that property for. Okay, so what does that mean? The market actually adjusts in our favor to continue closings. Like if it gets really, really bad and prices go down 50%, right? It's going down that low to keep the transactions going. See what I'm saying? So the market always works in our favor, you know, to do whatever it has to do. It's like mother nature. It does whatever it has to do to keep closings happening every day. And that's what's so great about this industry is that it doesn't matter what the market does. It's always gonna produce closings you know, because it, because it does make those natural adjustments, those organic adjustments based on supply and demand, you know? So, you know, if inventory goes to the moon and prices shoot down, you know, that's great. Let's pick up 10 or 20 investors that want to buy a bunch of stuff at the bottom and go to town, you know, pick, take your pick. Let's get the very best locations. Let's get the very best rate of returns, you know, while it's here. You know, and let's pick up 10, 15, 20 really great investors that want to just clean up and, uh, you know, sell them 10, 20 properties a piece next month. You know, here's, here's the thought. Okay. And it's really this simple. Okay. Your goals, let's say are a million a year. And right now you're a brand new agent, let's say. Okay. 
The only thing between you and that million a year are thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. And so every day you have to wake up and just chip away at that number. Uh, you know, let's see how many one-on-one -on -one conversations we can have with people in our market and make friends with them and put them in our database and continue to build brand with those people, uh, you know, off the back of that great first impression we made with them that we really care and we're really there for them and we're dependable and we're hardworking and we're consistent and we're everything they want in an agent. You make that great first impression, you treat them like family, you get them in your database, you send that weekly email, you do that social media and all the other things that you do to build your brand. You know, you're gonna be golden over the course of five years or so if you're in fact understand the philosophy behind the sweat equity that goes into having the thousand, thousands, thousands, like I don't know if it's 3,000, 5,000, 8,000, everybody's different with their tonality, with their pitch, with their scripts, with the, how they connect, how they communicate, how well they line up who they are with how they communicate, their mannerisms, everything. Everybody's different, so I don't know how many thousands it's gonna take for you to get to your goals, but it's gonna be thousands. And it doesn't matter if you get your leads from Zillow, Facebook, open houses, sphere of influence, cold calling, whatever it is, it doesn't matter to me. The fact is you're gonna to have to have thousands of conversations, no matter where they come from, you're gonna to have to stack up thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations before you're gonna get where you wanna go. And that's really just the bottom line behind everything. So if you can understand just the simplicity of everything I just said, coupled with the fact that the market has zero to do with your business, right? Then you, you should do fairly well, you know, and be able to build a pretty monstrous business over the course of the next three to five is same amount of transactions uh, the market has produced the same amount of transactions with a double digit price increase this year so theoretically you you should have a much better year this year than you had last year just based on the the the, the real stats of the market okay just based on the real stats you got the same amount of transactions but 10 percent higher price point that means if you did the same transact number of transactions you did last year which should be because we had the same amount of transactions as a market Okay, but you should make 10% higher because prices were 10% higher. So theoretically, okay, the real numbers, you know, outside of the lies people tell themselves or what people's opinions are, if you look at real stats and real numbers, you realize that theoretically everyone should have had a 10% better year than they did last year if they didn't grow, if they did the same amount of transactions as they did last year. Right, so that's just facts. And so if you're around people who are saying these kind of things, you start to believe them and think they're facts when they're not. <clears throat> when the market does shift and we do have lesser transactions than we're having now, which will happen, you know, what you have to realize is that even if we go down 50% in transactions, the 50% of transactions that are left is still a massive, massive, massive number right that you can never get to all of those people to help them because the process of each transaction is so strenuous you know to do you can't handle 50 pendings at one time right you can only handle so many i don't know what your number is everybody has a different number is it 10 is it 15 is it 5 is it 25 i don't know what each and every one of your individual capacities are but you can't do them all right and, and and even if the whole market goes down 50 percent there's still plenty for you to stay at your maximum capacity at all times for what you can handle so again the market has nothing to do with your business those are two completely separate uh, entities